Hello friends, in this video I will show you how can you create an EC2 instance or a virtual machine on Google Cloud Platform or on GCP. Alright, so without any further ado, let's go and uh, log into the Google Cloud Console. Alright guys, so this is how your console look like once you log into the Google Cloud Console. Now the very first thing which I do is I'll prefer to go and create a new project. So this project in GCP is similar to the resource group in Azure. Okay, so let's call it GCP VM demo. So this is my project name. Click on create. It's a creating new project for me. Okay, so it's done. Let's go and select the, the project. Okay, now if you see on your left hand, there's a menu and you have so many options like compute, serverless, storage, database, application integration, networking, operations and all right. So, but for us to create a virtual machine or to create an instance instance, we need to go to the compute section here. Okay, so we'll go to compute engine and then click on VM instances. Now you see compute engine API, what it does, it creates and runs virtual machines on Google Cloud platform okay let's click on enable now i think it will take uh, approximate minute to enable this particular computer engine api all right guys here we are now you see like there is an option to create a instance one option is here or second one is here you can click any of the button create instance i'll keep it same label let's go and add some labels to it i'll call it as environment let's call it dev Let's go and add one more tag called honor. It's a it's a good practice to add tags and OS say Ubuntu 18.18. Okay, save. Now location. So by default it is selecting US West for so it will be a location which is close to your city. Right now we see here this is the very important section called machine configuration because you will be charged as per your VM configuration right. So now if I go here uh, under series you see there are uh, four options to choose from N1, N2, N2D and E2. So E2 is like CPU platform selection based on availability so it will automatically choose the CPU platform. So let's go with E2. Now here machine type if you want to choose custom you can go and select custom and then you can give the data as per your need. But if you want to choose any of the existing configuration you can select. So this is the shared core where we are sharing the computing power with the other uh, users. Right? So you see E2 micro is the, the very basic machine. E2 is small and E2 medium is like good enough for your POC. But if you want to have a machine for your dev environment let's go with the standard. Like here you have two CPU core and eight GB of the memory, four CPU core or 16 GB of the memory, right? And if you need more intensive, like you need more memory, where like you have an application where you need more memory, you can go and select any of the configuration from here. Say eight CPU core or 16 GB of the memory or 16 CPU core and 128 GB of the memory, right? And if you're looking for more computing power, you can go and choose from the the below ones like 16 CPU core and 16 GB of the memory or 30 CPU core or 32 GB of the memory right now if you like this is the one and if you need more you can go to the this particular second option called memory optimized where you will have more computer more heavy machines actually right now say for example if I go and choose this particular high-end machine where we have 160 virtual core of the CPU and 3.75 TB of the RAM right memory now if you see the price is going to be huge 14,500 US dollar. Okay, so so you have to choose your machine as per your need, but you also make sure that you will be charged as per your configuration. Okay, this option display device if you want to record your machine or if you want to install some recording tools, enable to use screen capturing and recording tools. Okay, confidential VM service. This is like secure your virtual machine. What it says that it will this particular service add production to your data in use by keeping memory of this VM encrypted with keys. Okay, container if you want to go and install a container you can do that just go to deploy a container and you provide the link of your image. You can choose your restart policy and other things but we'll talk about this particular thing later in the coming videos. For now I will not select. Now this particular section is very important where you have to pay attention called boot disk. Here you have to choose your operating system 
right? So if you see currently by default it picks Debian, but we want to go and change and we want to install Ubuntu, right? So I'll go and select Ubuntu here. Let me just go and select the version. Okay, so there are multiple versions available, 16.4, 18.4, 20. You can choose any version. And I keep the disk size 10 GB as it is, no change. Okay, now here you can see that we are going to install Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. Okay, service account. So this is the this is the account that you can use. So this is the default account that you can use to access your virtual machine. Access cups will keep as it is. Let's allow HTTP and HTTPS traffic to your virtual machine. Now, if you want, you can simply click on create. It will create a virtual machine for you. But I just want to you to explore these options as well, where you have networking or so, for example, if you want to add additional disk to your virtual machine or under management, you can go. I'll show you actually. So let's if you want to add a new disk to your virtual machine, you can go and click on add new disk and then you supply the parameters. If you already have an existing machine, you click on this one, attach existing disk and then you give your disk name or the details. Right. Let's go to security. Security, it says that from the Google as per GCP, it recommends that you enable all three checkboxes turn on secure boot as well. OK, now if you go to management, there is one more important option. Deletion production. So if you enable this particular checkbox, it will avoid the accidental deletion of your virtual machine. I'll show you how it works in this video. OK, so I'll keep rest of things as it is and click on create. I think it will take a minute. So we just need to wait for a minute until we have our machine ready. All right, guys. So now our machine is up and running. Now I'll show you how can you connect to your virtual machine. Select your virtual VM, which is created instance one. And if you go to connect section, just click on this one. Now you see there are multiple options to connect to your virtual machine. If you want, you can just click on the very first one, open in browser window. And if you think you need to go something with like putty or some secured CRD tools, you can use that option too, right? But for now, for this video, I'll simply go and click on the very first option, open in browser window. You see here, this guy is trying to connect to the virtual machine right here from the browser itself. Cool, right? So now I can access, I can do whatever I want to do. I can install my tool or I can do a lot more in my virtual machine. Now I have complete access to the newly created virtual machine. Right? So this is how you can go and access your virtual machine, but uh, I'm not going to install anything here. I simply exit out of this one. Now you guys can just work on it. Right now, the next thing we'll talk about in this video, how can you delete this particular virtual machine? Let's say that I want to delete. You see, this particular delete option is disabled for you. Why? What it says that it says you cannot delete this VM instance because it is deletion protected, right? What does it mean? It means that you cannot simply go and delete this particular virtual machine. What you have to do is if you want to delete, you need to go to the click on the virtual machine you need to go and change the configuration. I'll show you how can you do that. Go to edit and then scroll down to management. Here you see, right? Deletion protection. If you guys remember, we enabled this particular checkbox, right? So I'm going to disable this particular checkbox. I'm going to click on save. So basically I'm updating the configuration. Okay, now if I want, I can delete this VM from here itself. There is an option or I can go back to the same window let me go and select. Now let's go and see, do we have that option now? Okay, let me just refresh. You see, now you have the delete option enabled. Just click on delete. Guys, remember one thing. If you are not going to work on this particular machine, better you delete this particular VM, else you will be charged. Or what you can do is, you can stop your virtual machine. Okay, so you don't have to pay. Right. So, but because my intention is to show you how can you create a virtual machine, how can you log in, how can you access your VM, and how can you make it the listening production. Right. Now I'm going to delete because I'm done with this video. It says deleting instance one. It will take some time, so we just need to wait. Okay. Here it says instance deleted. Now you see you don't have your virtual machine. It's gone now. All right, guys. Let's go to cloud platform. Now you see that we don't have any more resources in our project. So now if I want, I can just go to project setting and I can delete my project as well. So there's an option called shut down. I have to pass the ID and then click on. So for example, if you have multiple components or multiple resources in your project and if you want to delete all your resources in one click, simply go and delete your workspace or your project. All right.
All right, guys. Now, before I end this video, I just want to make sure that you disable the particular virtual machine if you have created or delete that particular virtual machine, else you will be charged. Okay. Thank you for watching and bye for now.